Hello and welcome. This is the next let's try and repair a Weller part. This is a Weller DS801 desoldering station. It's come to me like this. The stat has been took out and, and it has been dissembled into lots of pieces and I've been given lots of buttons. Now, the stats are pretty much impossible to get to them for, uh, for them, unfortunately. However, what I do have is this. This is a DS123 desoldering headset. It has the stat built into it and the heater built into it. Now, I'm not really sure which one of these is the heater and which two of these are the stat. So we're going to start off with a meter. So the reds are going to give us 10 ohms. That's the heater. I expect about 25 out of this. 22, that's the, uh, the stat. So blue is the stat, red is the heater. little board here um, that's where the stat wiring goes on it's got an ESD pin this hasn't got an ESD pin not the end of the world I've got two of these long screws, three of these, one of these and one of these to reassemble it with and what looks like it potentially is a cord grip. I've got a bit of working out, I didn't take this apart. Oh yeah, look, that's where the cord grip would have gone. So I think first things first is to take off this existing heater, um, which is a non-genuine Weller heater by the looks of it. Pull that out. That leaves us with the switch here, which should run the pump. So I'm just going to plug this together and just make sure that when we press that button, the pump goes burr. Now, we're not going to get any heating or anything from it because it's in bits. Okay, stick 230 into it, turn it on and perfect, that's what we want to see. The pump's running when we press the pump run button. Now. I've got a couple of other of these. The reason I want to get this one working is because the pump run button is on the handle and uh, that should be somewhat easier to use. So let's bundle them up a little bit. This is a brand new, uh, I suppose, new old stock part. I'm going to put these down the middle because there's no temperature probe going in this because the probe is built into 
that. And um, I'm just going to sort of just solder them on and hope that there's enough flexibility and everything for me to be able to um, sort of assemble it. Okay, these are a bit long. Let's just trim them off. Red heater, blue temperature sensor. So when we look at this, heater, heater, temperature, temperature. So I'm going to start off by just giving it all a bit of fresh solder. Give me the best chance of, of actually making a good joint onto these. Come on, stay put. Probably could do with some sort of clamp, but I don't have one. Because it's not normally the sort of work I do. Okay, there's one stat wire gonna. Two. These two are the the heater. So I want to convince one to solder onto there. One to solder onto here. not over happy with that the solder hasn't covered the top of the joint so I'm not happy that there's enough solder on there okay that's better okay let's turn that off so we've got thermostat wires here the heater wires here so let's try and put this back together that seems to want to sit on there. That seems to want to sit just there. So things first button. Seems to me I probably want to assemble this with the button facing down. Just pull that into there as far as it will go. And give that a jiggle. Now, I think realistically... I need to move the core grip up a little bit because I want it to go down a bit more. I'm running out of movement. So I'll just take the core grip up a little bit. And repeat. Feed the button in. 
Okay, that's took that wire. Ah, that's better. That wiring's gone in much further now. And that's given me some play on things. So two of these have got these long screws in, I reckon. One here, one here. I am kind of just um, making this up to a point. To be fair, these screws feel as though they should, they're much longer than they should be. Now, should the screws go all the way through? That's lined up like that. No, that's lined up like that. We do that none of those screws go through so I think my problem is these screws are too long Remember that this is not how it would have been assembled originally, which I'm changing it round a little bit from original. Okay, that's holding that in place. The button works. Now you're going to hold this, I suppose like that or like that or something. We'll see how it goes in. try and push those away into the bottom of the machine a little bit they've gone so when we look at the face we can put it together like that so what I'm going to do is just put that screw in I really feel as though these screws are too big. Okay, I've got some potential screws. So when we want that, we want that like that. Um, I've got three screws here that may or may not do it. I'm hoping because they've come out with something, come out of something else that's weller, that they'll be close enough to work. Okay, that one's going in there. nice this one's a really a, a much smaller one but okay the last one I've got is too long Okay, it's not too long anymore. I'll be back. Okay, so I've had this on for a minute or two. 
and you can see here that the temperature has come up one of the things this does do is when the heater's on it won't run the pump but it's working it's doing what it should do um, so you know that's brilliant we need to put a uh, I need to put a tube on it for the desoldering but for all intensive purposes that's now desold desoldering if I put my hand over here and block that press my button my gauge goes up and I can feel there's quite oh, you can see what's just done to my hand quite a good vacuum on it so that bit of that's working so there we go DS801 has been repaired using a, um, a Weller DS123 desoldering headset so if you've got one of these thermostatically controlled desolderers and you can get hold of one of these um, heads it will work it will do the job for you and it'll bring your desoldering station back to life well thank you for watching i hope that this has been enjoyable for you um, if you don't mind subscribing etc i'd appreciate it thank you